Hello, Adam here. Uh, it's our 19th reflection for Lent today. Uh, I'm in a slightly different position because the sun was dazzling me, but um, it looks like I'm a, in, in some kind of weird box with the kind of corners of our walls, but I um, hope that doesn't mess with your heads too much. Um, we are in, where are we today? Matthew chapter 18, so Matthew's account of the life of Jesus. Chapter 18, uh, it's very short today, just two, two verses. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. That's it. Um, it's quite easy to get caught up on numbers here. And, and numbers in the Bible are often very significant and have a lot of kind of parallels and references to other things. But um, I think the point of this, not going into all of that other stuff, is that Jesus is basically saying, um, don't count, essentially. I mean, he's not literally saying 77 times, so I want you to make a tally of every time somebody does something wrong to you. Count it up, and when you get to 77 times, then stop forgiving. I mean, I don't think that's quite what Jesus is trying to say. Um, but, um, I mean, there's no question even, should I forgive? I mean, it's, it's given as, you know, it's given as a standard thing. Of course, yes, you forgive. Even Peter, when he comes, he doesn't say, should I forgive my brother? It's just, how many times? Um and and Jesus then goes on to tell the story. There's a, one of his parables. He tells a story of a king and a servant, and the servant owns the, owes the king a large amount of money. Um, the king asks for the debt to be paid. The servant begs him, um, begs him to cancel the debt, and the king is merciful and cancels the debt. The servant goes on his way, and then the servant's uh, colleague. Do servants have colleagues? I don't know. A fellow servant. Um, also owns this owed this servant a smaller amount of money um, and the first servant who has had his, had his debt cancelled by the king just demands that this other servant pays him back and I think it says that he it literally kind of chokes him throttles him around the neck in order to get this other servant to, to pay back um, and it's a it's a it's a the, the point of the story is that the the forgiveness that we receive, from God, so God being the king, the servant being us, and the debt being anything that we've done wrong in our lives. Um, God has cancelled those debts for us, for all of us, and therefore we should be passing on that gift that God has given us to other people. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's it's easy for me to say I've not, I've not been part of a, a global genocide or anything. I've not been part of... Um, uh, a terrible, uh, I'm not a survivor of terrible crimes done against me or, or against my family. So I've not had to, I've never been asked or required to forgive at an incredibly deep level, but many people do have to. Um, but but I, I work with people who have been through things like that. Um, I work in, uh, in mental health, so people who are having mental health difficulties. And, um, and the thing that, that I see is that actually when people don't forgive when they're unable to forgive it doesn't do them any good and it might be an incredibly difficult thing to forgive somebody it might just be that people could say well actually I'd like to forgive them but I'm not ready to do that yet um, but actually if people harbour sort of hatred or resentment or a spirit of non-forgiveness actually all that does while it might be understandable all that does is is it creates difficulties in their lives. It stops them from being free. It can manifest in physical illnesses, uh, in mental health difficulties. Um, these, I mean, these are the extremes, you know. And um, and I don't know what I'm saying really. I think I, I mean I haven't made any notes for this reflection. It didn't feel like I needed to sort of write down much stuff. I felt like I'd just speak a bit more spontaneously. But um, the point of God's forgiveness is it's it's ridiculous. It's so it doesn't make any sense to forgive somebody seventy seven times plus however many other times it needs to. As humans, we don't do that. We can't work like that. We can't um, we can't sort of forget the things that have been done to us um, in the way that perhaps God can. Um, and the things that have done to us obviously shape us. They shape our future. And even when we forgive somebody those things still are part of our memory and part of how we might respond. Um, but the, the act of forgiveness is incredibly freeing. Um, 
and and perhaps that's the the reflection for today is to sort of think you know how can we become a little bit more like god in this extravagant forgiveness maybe that's through realizing the things that we've been forgiven for and we would always want to be forgiven i think if we've done something horrible to somebody else and we all do it to a greater or lesser extent we would want to be forgiven i think and just like in that parable um of the servants and the king um we would want the people around us to act in the way that the king did and to say yes i will i'll cancel that debt you don't owe that to me anymore um i don't know those are my thoughts i don't know if that's helpful for you but um let's pray and we'll uh, catch up again tomorrow okay father god thank you for your extravagant ridiculous forgiveness thank you that there's nothing that we can do that you won't um forgive us for there's no debt that we can build up that you won't cancel um and we just pray that you would give us give us a really living vibrant sense of what that means for our life that we can be forgiven by you and therefore we can forgive others through you and with your strength amen okay bye bye